Hoff a day and welcome to another Sunday episode of my Game of Thrones recap. It was a pretty fun episode and if you don't know already, spoilers ahead. So episode 3 picks off where episode 2 leaves off, obviously, with the White Walkers and the Army of the Dead showing up to Winterfell Castle. And already from the beginning, you know things are going to get heated. The Melisandre showing up and lighting the Dothraki swords on fire was super epic. Sort of gives you sort of like a ray of hope. You know, it's like that, that pump... You know, that motivational speech right before the big game. It's just that that little spark. And then they all charge into that wall of undead and a few, only a few make it back. Jorah, Jorah barely looked like he was on his uh, his horse. I don't even know how he stayed on his horse when everyone else is dead. So, uh, there was that. Um, the whole part with... The dragons and Daenerys flying off and killing them and then battling the Night King in the sky was awesome. I think it was great. I'm very interested to see what happens to Rhaegal, though. The other dragon that Jon was writing, is he dead? Because, uh, I don't know, in the previews it doesn't show... It doesn't show the the dragon at all. It just shows Drogon. So I'm not sure if Rhaegal survived that. And if so... Going into the last battle with Cersei and with only one dragon is going to be an issue. So, um, we'll see. Uh, the whole fighting part, and it was just the, the sheer amount of undead. The moment that the undead actually meets the front lines, and that's in this turn, and the way I'm explaining it is. When the undead finally meets the unsullied uh, forces at the at the I guess the front of the um, yeah on the front line, it just looks like a tidal wave of undead, and it's it was a crazy crazy sight just to see like a wall of corpses just coming straight at you. And my question was if Grey Worm was in the front. How did he survive that? I mean, he's like, it has to be a whole lot like a pressure. Just the people. Just think about the people on and that's and that wall hitting you. I mean, have you ever got, have you ever been into the ocean and get hit by a wave? Just think about that, but with people instead of water. I don't know how he survived that. Who knows, right? Maybe it's just he has plot armor. That's all I can think about. But that was an interesting scene to watch. Watching all of your characters that, what, 20, 20 characters fighting against or in this last stand, going into this episode, I'm like, some of these people are going to die. And some of them did. So, uh, I forgot Ed. I think it's Ed from uh, the Night's Watch. Uh, when I watched, saw him die trying to save Sam, I, always, I kept thinking like, oh, everyone keeps having to save Sam. And the greatest thing about this episode, and it's something that they think they talked about in um, the ep the look back at the episode, is that Arya was always destined to kill the Night King. I think they said three years ago, when the show started diverging, that Arya was the one that was supposed to kill the king. I'm pretty sure George R. R. Martin's. That's from what I remember. He's the one that told the writers and um, the showrunners the actual ending of the show. So this is sort of playing out based on what he was going to do as far as writing the books. So maybe Arya was always destined to kill the Night King. Arya was just a badass, which is what we all thought. Jon, you know, tried to do the heroic thing and, you know, ended up almost dying again. Jorah dies, sort of redeems himself, but felt, felt bad because everyone knows he's in, he was in love with Daenerys and we all knew it was never going to happen. And yeah, I mean, that, that was pretty much it. It was a great episode. My, my favorite episode, my surprising episode, was that going through all the first and second episodes of the season and when everyone keeps talking about the crypts are safe, the crypts are safe, the crypts are safe, 
in your head, you're like, no, nah, that can't be true. Like the crypts is like, something's gonna happen to the crypts. And I was not disappointed. So when the Night King raises his army, all of the dead Starks come to life. And at that, that part was intense because they're just crawling out of everywhere. And it's like, you didn't have to break through the doors, the front doors, every, it's just, you know, uh, you're not tra you're not scared of the dead people outside. Now there's the dead people that are inside. Literally, you're in a crypt. So it was uh, it's intense. It's I'm actually surprised a lot more people, main character people, made it out alive. Like I thought, maybe one of the start kids are gonna die. Maybe John was gonna get seriously injured. Maybe Daenerys was gonna get seriously injured. Or um, Jamie Lannister was probably gonna die, but that that didn't make sense because he has to do his whole thing with Cersei and find figure that out. Or Brienne was gonna die, but yeah, like a lot of people kind of came out uh, alive. I'm sort of wondering what the what's the ending gonna be. Like now that there's only probably about three episodes left, I'm still trying to figure out how this is gonna go. Um, another thing too, I'm very surprised that this this episode last like this whole battle finished in uh one episode i thought it would take at least two so there's a surprise there i'm wondering if it was intentional or not is the downfall of the night king was his was his hubris right like his ego when daenerys is flying in front of him with her dragon and tries to kill him by dragon fire you don't think it you kind of like uh did it work did it not work in my head not gonna work. That's not how you kill the final boss. You gotta kill the final boss very strate strategically, and uh, the dragon is just way too much, too much of a blunt force object. And I don't know. I just felt like his his sort of like hubris was his downfall. I mean, you know, he's you can see him smiling in certain scenes where he's raising the dead, and especially like right after they try to kill him, the dragon fire. He just has a smirk on his face. Right when Daenerys leaves, that's right after he's about to throw a ice spear at the dragon you know he just has his auras like i'm unkillable and then the sneakiest one the littlest one the youngest one of the starks is the one that ends up killing him but it was a great episode loved it uh can't wait for the next one uh sunday can't come soon enough and i will see you on my next uh game of thrones talk next sunday i hope you watch it if you did hit the like button Subscribe and don't forget to lift heavy and level up.